Welcome to Moments with Marianne. This is your host, Marianne Pastana. And we're here today with special guest, Jake Zortman, who's here to share with us his new book, The Rise of the Legends. So are you looking for a book you can dive into that is filled with a daring quest, driven by science, math, and cutting-edge technology, and it has a riddle that needs to be solved? Well, this book is definitely the book for you. So Jake Zortman is an author, cinematographer, producer, and director who owns a production company in Los Angeles, California. Jake has spent his career as a collaborator in creative ventures across many platforms, including television, documentary features, and books. Jake is also the CEO of Good Harbor Entertainment, where he's not just telling stories, He's building immersible experiences where storytelling meets innovation and the mind's eye brought to life. So welcome to the show, Jake Zortman. Thank you. I appreciate uh, the time. Thank you for having me. What an honor it is to have you here to talk about this book. I got to ask, what a page turner. What even inspired you to write this? Well, um, I, uh, this, this is a, it's a little bit of a tale. I will make it as concise as I can. I ended up getting in touch with a, a, a guy that I knew in the fifth grade that I, I had lost track of. I only knew him in the fifth grade, but this one person stuck out in my mind and I always remembered him. I don't remember anyone else from the fifth grade. And I moved from where we lived a long, long time ago. I have no connection with anyone. And I was at dinner with some friends. And the reason I remember him, by the way, is because he lit himself on fire trying to be Gene Simmons from Kiss. Um, and so uh, I was with some friends at dinner, and I had told that story. And they said, well, whatever happened to that guy? I said, I don't know. And my wife convinced me to look him up on Facebook and to reach out to him, which I was very reluctant to do, because I think that is the strangest and creepiest thing in the world, is to you know ping somebody that you knew 40 years earlier <laughs> out of the blue. And, um, but she said, you know, how, how would you like it if, if you got that message, like somebody was talking about you 40 years after you were hanging out? And I thought, yeah, all right. So I did it. And it really changed everything for, for both of us in a way. Um, <clears throat> during the pandemic, we were in touch and he was trying to keep himself busy and came up with the idea of teaching kids using little drones and teaching them STEM sort of fundamentals on Zoom. And he reached out to me at one point and said, hey, you know, I'm doing this little thing with kids. I get a couple kids in the Zoom. And I thought maybe, you know, it's an animated, uh, it could be an animated, you know, like, like a little show like Baby Einstein's. And I know you work, I work in the motion picture business and he knows, I, you know, he said, you work in Hollywood, maybe, you know, anything, something about producing something like that. And I was like, I, I don't know. I was busy, but I decided to log into this Zoom. And I was so inspired and blown away because here's this guy in his 50s who has no background really in education, teaching kids. There's five kids in the Zoom and they, and this course of pandemic, so they're not in school. Um, and they are having a great time and they're learning and they're using drones to do geometry and math and navigation and things. And I thought that was just brilliant. And so he and I started talking about, you know, what it would take to build this into a big educational curriculum and build like you know and maybe have a this this animated you know some sort of animated show and one day i woke up and i wake up with stories in my head all the time i woke up with this fantastic tale and i decided to write it as a treatment and um for a for a show and it was not this anim this little baby einstein style thing was what is essentially what the book is and I got some positive feedback, and I decided I didn't want to just go try to produce some television show. I wanted to write it as a book and and develop my world and burn burn in my characters and build an audience. And so my friend Scott went off and built this education company, which is now all over the world. It's an international drone curriculum that is in schools across the country. He went and did that. Meanwhile, I wrote this book, and this book is inspired by the idea of teaching kids through um, in, engaging kids in STEM and in, in other themes um, and, and really inspiring them to, to engage their world and to go out and be part of it. 
And the book centers around a club called the Drone Legends. The company that Scott created is called Drone Legends, and that's the company that's that does the educational program. So my idea was, uh, you know, the kids that are out in school all over the place could can get into this exciting, fun narrative and identify with the kids that are in a similar type of program that they're in, but these kids in the book are having wild adventures. And 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 it would sort of feed, they would feed off of each other. And that's what inspired it. And then it became something much bigger. It just ended up being a fun story and a great narrative. And it's just gotten a lot of great feedback and attention. That was not concise. <laughs> but it was a very good story. And I'm so glad that you shared that with us. And how fascinating is that, that these ideas come together, you guys reach back out to each other, connect, and this amazing partnership is developed. So when you were writing The Rise of the Legends, was Scott uh, any in any way influential in that, aside from the drone legends? No, um, I took, I, we sort of, to be honest, went our sep- I, I wouldn't say went our separate ways because we talked regularly about our dream of putting together this this world because it's really meant to be more than than um, it's meant to be more than an educational curriculum and meant to be more than just a book. Together, it is it is something. It's a world, and you know, there's a website for Rise of the Legends now where you can uh, you know, join the club and get secret codes and participate and do all this, this, this fun stuff. Um, there will be study guides and things that go along with the book. So it is not only the STEM program that Scott has on at his company, but then we have a literacy sort of literacy goal program, um, that's going to come out for, for, so you can buy that with the book if you want to. Um, so we we sort of went our he concentrated on building that company. I wrote the book. In fact, I didn't even show it to him until it was done. I didn't I, I when I was finally finished with the manuscript, I said, here, check it out. Tell me what you think. And he was blown away. And then and then I went and finished it. And I actually, by the time we really got back together, the book was was final edit, cover done, artwork done, everything. Um, that's when we we sort of got back together just a couple of months ago. So you, can you share a little bit about the story with us? We don't want to sure. give any spoilers away. Of course not. Um, and, you know, I, I assume in general with, with things like spoilers with this, I'm speaking to, you know, the, the folks that are are going to purchase this book are parents, I think. You know, kids maybe aren't out buying the book. So I'll be a little bit more liberal about about uh, about uh, sharing some of the content. But um, it's, it's the story of – it's uh, the story starts – there's a, there's a prologue that starts off in the future. There's a time travel element to it. There's this mysterious man who goes through a portal. And he's obviously not a very nice man. Um, and then the chapter one begins with a girl named Michaela who um, is moving that day to a new town, uh, to start in a new school, and is very stressed out and upset about it, which a lot of kids can identify with. In fact, that's the way I grew up. I moved a lot. And that's probably where that came from. And she... Um, quickly meets uh, her neighbor, and his name is, at the beginning of the story, his name is George. His his name is really Jorge, but he, you know, a part of the story, the theme in the story has to do with change and moving and your identity, and George is trying to process his identity, and so he uh, is George at the beginning because he wants to fit in with all the other kids at school who don't have Spanish names, um, but he changes his mind during the narrative. Um, they uh he invites her to jo- join this drawing this this drone program called drone legends an after school drone curriculum led by a super cool teacher named mr singh who is a thick but he's a uh, sick you know an in- an indian but some people pronounce it sikh and he uh is a he's a surfer an avid ocean guy and the coolest science teacher in the world and he is the leader of the drone legends club uh, they go off on their first mission, and this nefarious, evil kid, who is the antagonist in the story, interferes with it, causes an accident where one of the drones almost um, ca- uh, causes uh, one of the uh, one of the friends to be electrocuted, and something intercepts it. And the thing that intercepts it, they don't understand what it is when they find it. It's this 
It looks like a drone, but it looks very futuristic. So they bring it to Mr. Singh, who investigates it. Turns out that that is actually a drone from the future that was sent back to protect these kids called what it calls the legends um, to make sure that they become the people they're supposed to become. They are legendary characters. In the future, Michaela, Jorge, Kendall, the other friend, Thomas, and Colin are <clears throat> end up being being important people in care in history who changed the path of humanity and basically saved the world. So this thing has been sent back to make sure that happens. And they, at the same time, Michaela, who, who's in her new, it's a very, it's a very old house that her parents bought. And she um, is, is, is investigating it. It's kind of creepy. And she finds a secret passage in her closet up to an attic where she finds a journal left by a woman almost a century before. And this journal talks about uh, leaving a, a message and instructions and the tools need, that, the, that, the, that the saviors of, the, of humanity will need. And it's written in, in codes and riddles and mysteries. So her and her friends decide to try to decipher the journal because they think it's an important message. And in the process of that, they go... They end up going on adventures. Jorge is a sailor and he's a small sailboat. He goes off to an island because he deciphers, they decipher part of the clue and realize that they have to get to an island. And he sails off to an island and goes through his whole set of adventures and then finds some maps. And then those maps lead to uh, a, a something to find in the mountains uh, near nearby, which ends up being an adventure through mine shafts and some danger there, uh, which they end up finding an, where they find another clue, which um, leads them to a sort of secret hideout that's under the city and a labyrinth of tunnels that have been left and forgotten by smugglers uh, back when Good Harbor, the fictitious city, was was more of a, um, a place for merchants and pirates and things like that. Uh, all the while, somebody or something keeps interfering with them and, and seems to always be one step ahead of them. And um, they're not sure who that is until the very end, in the big moment, during the big, the, the, the climax and the finale of the story. And then we realize everything that's happened. And we realize how that, that you know, time and time travel and when the process and the narrative started is, is not as apparent as it might have been. Uh, all the while, that that AI drone, the drone that came back from the future, its name is Gimbal. They name it Gimbal. Um, is sort of this character that's that's filling in parts of the narrative. It speaks to itself. It has three personalities. We learn why in the in the epilogue. Um, it has three personalities and it has a lot of arguments with itself. Um, there are two male and one female, and they argue with each other out loud, and so that answers a lot of questions as the narrative. As we go through narrative, uh, it's the kids use a lot of, as I mentioned, the STEM side of things, STEM being science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, they use a lot of those principles. I purposely put a lot of that in the book so that there was this educational side to it. So it's entertainment, but it also is designed to inspire kids in, in, in STEM. And so they have to use some geometry. They have to learn how to navigate. They have to use some math. They have to decipher codes. Um, they use old technology like sextants and the crystal radio, which is in, which is the original form of a radio, a uh, shortwave radio. And they also have technology that doesn't exist. Like one of the characters, Kendall, has these sort of augmented reality glasses that look like regular glasses to everybody. But from her perspective, she gets all sorts of data and information. So it's a lot of fun. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break. We've been speaking with Jake Zortman in regards to his hot new release, The Rise of the Legends. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Are you a coffee lover who wants to make a difference? Look no further than Fire Department Coffee, a veteran-owned business that gives back to support first responders in need. Each batch of coffee is freshly roasted right here in the USA by a dedicated team of first responders and coffee experts. 
So when you enjoy a cup of Fire Department coffee, you're not only drinking high-quality coffee, you're supporting members of your community. Start your day with a coffee that gives back. Visit FireDepartmentCoffee.com. That's Fire, D-E-P-T, Coffee.com. There comes a moment when you realize you're somewhere special, when you discover that each beautiful creature that you see has been rescued from a life of absolute horror and brought to this incredibly free place. Here is where their lives were forever changed and where yours will as well. Discover over 500 tigers, bears, and lions at the brand new visitor center at the Wild Animal Sanctuary just outside Denver. For more information, visit wildanimalsanctuary.org. Discover true freedom at the Wild Animal Sanctuary. It's one thing to become attached to your perfect home, but what do you do when that home becomes attached to you? A family in dire need of a fresh start, a mysterious house tied to the past. Buried deep within the foundation of the old Far Hill Manor lies a centuries-old secret. Dark forces or something stronger just waiting to be discovered. Caretaker, a supernatural thriller by breakout author R.J. Halpert. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. I'd like to thank Jason Eastwood at Guitarfulness for sharing his inspiring music and talent with us. His music is known worldwide for cultivating atmospheres of harmony, inner peace, and clarity. Visit Jason's website at guitarfulness.com. Join his newsletter, be part of his community, and download his music. Welcome back to Moments with Marianne. We're here today with special guest, Jake Zortman, who's here sharing with us his hot new release, The Rise of the Legends. When you were adding the riddles and puzzles and mm-hmm. codes, I mean, was that really difficult for you to create? Uh, it, it was because, um, it was in a way, yes. I mean, it was fun because I think I loved that kind of stuff, you know, when I was a kid. Um, it was, it was only difficult in that I wanted it to make sense. The hardest part was making it make sense for the age of the kids. You know, it, it can't be too fantastic. It needs to be something they could, they could grasp. And, but then for the narrative be um, difficult enough that it wasn't obvious. So not anyone could solve it. And so um, I spent a lot of time sort of weaving it together um, making sure there was only pieces of things becoming apparent at a time so that unless somebody had, because there is a competitor, there's the antagonist who is trying to figure out the same, figure out the same thing for other, for, for the opposite reason, not, not to save humanity, but to take advantage of things. Right. And so, uh, I, I made sure that those, that, that somebody had to have the full picture to actually put the puzzle together. So, uh, it was a little difficult. But um, it was also a whole lot of fun. So why don't you share with us the characters that you have in this cast? Sure. Michaela is, I I started out thinking I wasn't going to have a main character, really, because I wanted to be about a team. But Michaela is really, she is the leader. She is destined to be the president of the United States someday. Her name is Michaela Cadono. And uh, she is the leader. And then um, her neighbor and friend, Jorge, uh, is um, a kid that loves engineering and can build anything. His dad is, is very handy and has a great garage full of all sorts of cool tools. And, and so Jorge is, a, is, is, the, is the engineer of the group. And then we have Kendall, who um, <clears throat> is, wants to be an astronaut. And a groundbreaking pilot, she wants, to, and she is destined actually to lead the first mission to Mars in the future. And she is the pilot of the, the the amazingly talented pilot of the group who can fly a drone through 
<clears throat> with her augmented reality glasses, it ends up saving them by flying through all sorts of crazy stuff. And then we have Colin, who is a very shy boy who's being picked on at the beginning of the story by by a bully. Um, and uh, he wears headphones in class because he's very sensitive. Sounds and light and things like that really get to him. He's a very sensitive kid, and he keeps to himself. But Michaela reaches out to him, and they bring him. They, they make friends with him and bring him into the club. And then he realizes he actually has some special abilities. His sensitivity extends beyond just you know the five senses that we're, we normally have. He can really perceive things, especially in the animal world. He can, I wouldn't say speak to animals, but he can communicate at a certain level with them, which comes in handy during certain parts of the adventure. And then the bully I mentioned is named Thomas, and he torments Colin, and he's, he, the, 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 the drone legends do not like him, and they move to do something to him, in, at which point in time they realize why he is a bully, and they have to check themselves and say, you know, he's a, he is actually... There's a reason he behaves the way he does, and it, and it's because of basically because of the way the dad treats him, and they find that out, and instead of hurting him, they reach out and offer him friendship. He ends up joining the club and being the fifth member, and um, he's a big tough kid, and he's sort of the muscle of the group. And 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 just one other note, my characters, you know, my I watched my sons go through school. Um, they went to school in Santa Monica. Uh, but, you know, we live in Los Angeles, a, a big metropolitan area. And, you know, I really wanted the characters to reflect what I saw every day as kids. And that's and they're all, you know, trying to figure themselves out. They're not so stereotypical and identified as maybe we think. As certainly our national dialogue sort of, you know, sometimes um tries to put people into camps i think i keep young people don't see themselves <clears throat> as one thing or another they they are a mixture of all sorts of things and philosophies and and so that's what the characters are they're really you know diverse in their in their own way not 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 a forced diversity necessarily for a point it's really reflective of of kids that i see in school every day I think that that's why it resonates with audiences so much. And and so this book is really written for middle school students? Um, I say, yeah, late, I mean, it, you know, middle school is a term that varies across the country, but, but I would say commonly to be sixth to eighth grade is probably the sweet spot. You know, 10 to 10 to 13 you know, nine-year-olds that are that are a little bit more advanced at readings, and for, and to be honest, on the top end, I have friends in my age group that love this kind of stuff. There, there are fans of middle grade, you know, literature that are adults. Sometimes you always love it, and so I, I think you can read it as old as you are. But really, the the focus will be, I'd say, ten to thirteen. So, is there some type of meaning behind the diversity of the characters you have? Well, I mean, there there is in the sense that. Um, like I said, it's a reflection. I wanted kids to, to to see themselves. And this is the way I see kids. I, I, I see kids that don't, you know, Michaela Cadono, her mom is of European ancestry, her dad of Japanese. You know, that's 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 just if if I go to walk into an elementary school here, that's what I see. You don't see I don't see um I don't see see necessarily people divided into specific backgrounds. They're, they come from all sorts of backgrounds. So part of that diversity is that. And of course, we have both, you know males and females in the story. Um, but, you know, I reflect on years ago, uh, about 25, maybe more years ago, I was in Japan shooting a documentary film. And I was in a, in a classroom, uh, second or third day in Japan, I'm in a classroom, an elementary school classroom. And I have my lens zoomed in, and I'm panning tight shots of faces. I'm panning across the classroom, face to face of the students, rolling my focus between the kids' faces. And I, the most ridiculous thought occurred to me. I thought, "Holy cow! Everybody here is Japanese. Every one of these kids is Japanese." It it was a strange thing to think of. I'm in Japan, of course. Every but he is. But I all of a sudden I realized it's like wow, the, the United States is very different in that respect. Um, at the end of that that film, uh, we were at dinner with one of I guess it was sort of the equivalent of the State Department of 
of Japan, one of the a diplomat that took us to dinner in Tokyo. And I was telling him that experience. I said, you know, I have this experience. I just, I never really thought about it, you know, before a classroom of everyone is Japanese and in the United States, it's just not that way. And he said, you know, I had the same experience when I first went to the United States. I didn't speak in very much English. I came to the United States to study and to learn English. And as soon as I got to the country, people would come up to me and start talking to me like I knew how to speak English. And I was very frustrated. I thought to myself, can't you see that I'm Japanese? And, you know, that, oh, I've never forgotten that story. And I think that's one of the most amazing things about our country that makes us very unique is that we don't, we're not, and, and, and again, like our national, in, in the national dialogue, it seems like whatever, whatever perspective you're coming from, we're, there's a there's a, a drive to sort of identify people as being certain things and i don't think that's who we are i think what we are is a country of people from all over the place and all sorts of ideas and all sorts of uh aspects to their lives and it's a unique thing i think in in history and i I'm, i think that's part of my motivation for um reflecting that in the characters I think it's such a good representation of what a melting pot is and in, in what you see in many places in the U.S. And so mm-hmm. having that, I was real excited because you really do bring in so many different characters. It lends for such great creativity. Yeah, no, it's fun. And and I'll tell you something when, you know, the, the most fun thing about about writing is, so, so I wake up, it's really strange. I often wake up in the middle of the night and I have a story in my head. And in my process of writing, I <clears throat> I don't write out outlines and things like that. I go for walks or I, you know, sometimes if I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll drive, I don't listen to anything in the radio, on the radio or podcasts. Sometimes I just think and I just play with my narrative and I have these little, it's almost like a daydream, right? And, and I have this daydream and then, you know, when I get back and sit at my computer, I, I write some of these scenes. But the characters, the characters, where do they come from? I don't know. They 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 evolve and they develop. I start writing, you know, on chapter one about Michaela. I don't know who she is yet. I find out who she is. She evolved into her own person throughout the narrative, and I didn't don't feel like I guided it. It is the most really fascinating thing. I get to know them. I'm excited to see what's going to happen next. I don't plan that out, and. Um, I, I think it, I don't know where it comes from. I mean, probably from somewhere in my head, but it's obviously the coalescing of all of these ideas and experiences that I've had and expressing themselves as, as a, as a different human being, to be honest, they are people. So you mentioned what's next. So what is next? Are mm-hmm. you, are we talking in a movie TV series? What's in the plans? Well, yeah. Um, the uh, in in the rise of the legends world, what's what's going on right now is we're developing our website, which is uh, rise of the legends dot com, and that will have a lot of ex- that will be I'm, my idea is to make it a little bit of a three dimensional experience so that um, fans um, can participate. They can do fan art if you if you like a scene or something. There's a lot of you know inventions and things in the book. Uh, I will invite people to 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 draw their own concepts or write their own backstories or sidebars to, to the narrative um, and to be able to interact with the world. And as I said, there'll be a monthly newsletter with science experiments to do at home with secret codes to decipher with contests. You can put your own drone legends team together. So that's in the the immediate next. And, And that's to sort of build this world. And then we have study guides, you know, one, one thing that's going on in our country is, you know, homeschooling is, is exploding um, across all demographics. It's not just one particular point of view. It's it's a lot of people are teaching their kids at home these days. And so uh, this, the other thing that's on our, our short-term agenda is to have that study guide that goes along with it. So you could actually buy a book, get science kit, and you can get um, you know a study guide that you can use at home or you could use it in a school program. And then uh, I'm gonna write the second one. Uh, it's a series, I'm not sure, Right now, I originally thought it would be just an on, like a Hardy Boys style thing where it just goes on and on, just episode at a time. 
Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that's what I want to do or if I want to just make it like a trilogy or if I want to let the kids grow old, older in the narrative so then they become high schoolers because they're 13 years old in, in this story. Um, so that's the immediate. And then, yes, um, I really wrote this. And anyone, everyone that reads it says, oh, my gosh, this will make a great movie, a great TV series. Um, I wrote it for that purpose. It's very visual. There's a lot of things in there. You're going to read it and be like, oh, yeah. I could see that. Um, so that is definitely in the works, but um, that is that comes, you know, after an audience is built. That comes after we have a bunch of fans and there's a lot of support behind it. That's the time that you can go and, and make that pitch and get that happening. Well, when it does, because I'm sure it's going to, this is such a phenomenal book. When it does, I'm sure we want you back to talk about the what's happening next with this series. My goodness, Jake, you're such a inspir- just such an inspiration. I'm kind of speechless here. Where can our listeners connect with you and be part of your community and learn more about the Rise of the Legends? Well, riseofthelegends.com is the website for the book. Um, my name, of course, if you Google me, you'll find me, Jake Zortman, and I have a website. And uh, the company that we created for all of this is called Good Harbor Entertainment. And uh, you can also find that online. And um, you can you can connect with me through any of those things. Of course, I'm on social media. Um, I'm the easiest person. The, the nice thing about having a unique name is that you're the easiest person in the world to find. Uh, it's also the worst thing about having a unique name. But um, anyway, uh, so I'm very easy to find anybody. I welcome anyone that would love to, to like to reach out and, and discuss. I'm very findable. Well, Jake, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. It was great. Well, it's been such an honor to spend this time with you, Jake. Thank you. Again, if you'd like to connect with Jake, you can at his website, jakezortman.com, and also learn more about his book, The Rise of the Legends. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, where we make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.